Hi everybody, welcome back to the Franchise Buyers Course. We're here on day six. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to spend the first five days here with me, cover some great information on the franchise buying pr uh, process. Hope you found it very educational and informative, and I'm excited to have you back here again today. Again, it's Brandon Clifford, Senior Franchise Consultant at Global Franchise Solutions. Today we're going to talk about financing. Um, how much can you afford? And um, Obviously, that's the biggest hurdle that everyone faces is uh, you have uh, the, the yearning to become an entrepreneur. You want to be in business for yourself, and it's like, man, how am I going to afford this? So that's something that we help everyone with. To, um, so today I have some great information to kind of just give an overview of different ways that people are financing their business investment these days. Um, and, of course, if any, uh, if any questions come up and you want to reach out, give me a call. My cell phone is 978-891-7145. I'm sure many of you are aware that the number one reason why businesses fail is due to undercapitalization. So undercapitalization is when a company does not have sufficient capital to conduct normal business operations and pay creditors. It can occur when the company is not generating enough cash flow um, or is unable to access forms of financing such as debt or equity. So it's really important, guys, you know, at the very beginning of your journey to think about your whole picture think about what all your expenses are going to be to get to profitability you know and I'm talking a whole year's worth of expenses because when you really think about it, a typical startup you have all these different expenses rent phone internet utilities equipment fixtures you know anything you can think of to run the business on a day in day out basis but also what's going on at home you know paying your mortgage paying for food uh, maybe you have some kids and you have to support um, you know, so think about all those things and add it all up together and multiply it by 12, you know, 12 months, a full year to get that, that business ramped up so you can reinvest any profit you make back into your business and get to, to a point where then the business can support itself and sustain itself and hopefully put some money back in your pocket. But until you get to that point, you know, to, in order to, to crack that nut, so to speak, you know, it, it all, it's all on the business owner. So you really need to think about your whole picture and yeah, maybe the business only costs twenty five or 30000 to get off the ground, uh, but then think about what these expenses are going to be for the next 12 months and add that onto that 30000 The true all-in costs might be seventy five. It might be $100,000. And, of course, you know, it, most people don't use their cash for this sort of a thing. They get some sort of financing, and, you know, whenever you're – on making some sort of a large purchase, whether it's purchasing a home, buying a car, or buying a business, you know, always want to make sure early in the process you take some time and get pre-qualified for a loan. You know, it's really important. I always say with my clients that we want to make sure that we're fishing in the right pond. You know, we don't want to be looking at businesses that cost five hundred thousand dollars if you can only get a loan up to a hundred thousand dollars. You know, and um, we work with a great company at Global Franchise Solutions called Guidant Financial. Um, they're they're uh, they're brokers, so they work with lots of different banks and lots of different programs. And you know, the, most of this presentation today came from them, from their years of experience in the franchise industry. And you know, they revealed the top four business financing methods that people are using these days to, to finance a franchise. And we're gonna jump into that real quick right now. So the number one way people are getting the uh, Finance for, for uh, franchises these days through the SBA, okay? So using an SBA business loan. And so a lot of people don't understand, but the SBA isn't a lending institution. An SBA loan comes from a local bank or, you know, a national bank, and um, but then it's government-backed, you know, so a portion of the funds are backed by the government. Um, pros of an SBA loan, very cost-effective. The low the rates are typically pretty low, around 6 to 8%. Um, pretty long terms as well too you can get up to 15 years i've seen even for an sba loan which you can keep your monthly payment relatively low it's a fixed payment every single month you know what it's going to be so you can really have a, a a strategic plan for growing your business you know you understand your budget you know what you need to do to pay it back and then the rest of it can be can be put towards your your other expenses and your other things some of the cons of an SBA loan, um, it takes a long time to get funded. Uh, anything that's government, you know, government process, of course, there's going to be lots of applications, lots of, of hoops to jump through to make sure that their portion is, is going to be secured, you know. So it can take a long time to try to do this on your own. That's why I recommend you work with a broker or your local bank to try to, who, can, who has a streamlined price process in, in place already. They already have a relationship with the lenders um, to get this deal done for you quickly. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we talk about it, it. It's kind of a joke, a running joke I have. When you want to get an SBA loan, they're going to ask you for your, your firstborn child and a pint of blood. Um, but really, it, it is kind of a process, and that's probably the biggest con. 
The, the second biggest way people are getting funded for franchises these days is a 401k rollover called a ROBS, Rollover for Business Startups. And so this is a, a really unique um, platform that people are using where you can take your money that you have in your retirement fund, um, as long as it's a qualified retirement fund, an IRA or a 401k, um, and, and use that to invest into a business. And when you do this, you don't have to pay um, any early withdrawal penalties, any early taxes or anything like that. Um, and you know, what it does is it produces a, a quicker path to profitability, you know, because it's not a loan. There's no specific monthly payments. So at the very beginning, you don't have to pay it back right away if you like. So you can ramp up better. So you can have increased cash flow in your business day one, which is huge and important. Um, also, the, the, there's no interest rate, you know, so it's not a true loan where you're paying back 5% on your money. It's your cash. You're taking it out of one account and you're putting it into another account. And then now that's, um, you know, you can decide where you want to invest it. So instead of buying stock in Apple, you buy stock in your company, you know, and then that's a cash injection into that company. So very easy to qualify. You don't have to have collateral or minimum credit score or anything like that. You just have to have money in your 401k. So if you have $50,000 in a rollable, rollable retirement account, you can use it, you know, to start up a business. And then you control the funds, you know, so it's not like it's in the stock market and you're not sure exactly where it's going. Um, you know, you like I mentioned, you now buy stock in your company um, and it's your business that benefits from that cash injection, not someone else's. You don't have to worry about what's going on in the market. You can kind of now control it by growing your business. Some of the cons, though, of a 401k rollover, um, ongoing requirements. So it's definitely another pro that's not even on the list that now your company has a, has a, a 401k. All right? You have to sponsor that. And it's a benefit, a competitive benefit to attract employees and good employees to keep them there. But it does require some paperwork. So you're annually you're going to have to do filing to the IRS and the Department of Labor. Um, and then also, I mean, you're, you're, t you're risking your retirement. I mean, even having your retirement in a 401k or in the stock market of some sort, it's never a sure bet. But a lot of people aren't comfortable taking their, you know, their nest egg out of their retirement and using it to start a business, because um, it's obviously if your business fails, you're going to lose part or all of your your nest egg. I mean, you won't you lose any more than you take out, um, but I mean, it obviously is a risk, a calculated risk that you need to be comfortable with. So the number three way that a lot of people are using um, is their home equity. Uh, the the real estate market is obviously you know booming right now, and so home values are back up, and people are starting to tap into their home equity to start a business. Um, again, kind of like the four hundred one k rollover, it's easy to qualify for. If you have equity in your home and it's your equity, you can choose to use it for however you want. Um, you know, it's an affordable debt. Interest rates are lower than an SBA loan. An SBA loan might be six to eight percent, like you said. HELOCs these days are, are closer to four percent. And that interest is tax deductible as well, too. So it's a great way to use for working capital. So maybe get a smaller SBA loan and then get a HELOC for your working capital when you first start. That's what a lot of people do these days. It gets you kind of through that rough patch with your cash flow at the beginning. The cons, you're risking your home. You know, So if you're unable to pay your balance, um, you're at risk of losing your home and getting going into foreclosure. And then there's a lot of times there's some extra costs and fees, you know, that you think there, you know, that there's no cost, but it rolls into your payment or whatever it might be. Um, so just make sure that whatever bank you're you're working with on that, you look at what the loan processing fees are, the attorney fees, and you know, all that sort of thing. And the fourth way that many people are using, you know, one of the, the number four top way people are using to finance and, and start a business is an unsecured loan. So. The pros of an unsecured loan, um, number one, you don't have to risk any sort of personal asset. There's no uh, liens against your house. There's no liens against your 401k or anything like that. You're, you're qualifying for this loan strictly based off of your credit score, you know, your credit worthiness, and, that, and that's really it. Very quick funding. I've worked with, with clients that got, they got a, over $100,000 in just a few weeks. Um, freedom, there's no restriction on what you can use the funds for. It's, it's your, your loan. It's unsecured. You can use it for whatever you want. Uh, very low introductory rates. So the interest rates are zero to three percent. You know, during the introductory period, typically for the first year, maybe up to eighteen months. Um, so it's a really good short-term financing option. However, the rates do increase. You know, and that's the biggest major con is techni technically they're kind of like just like a giant credit card. So I mean, at the first year, it might be zero percent, but you're going to want to either roll that amount into a traditional loan uh, once you now get into into the business and have some cash flow, or try to pay it off as fast as possible so that way your your interest rate doesn't jump up to 18, 19, 20 percent. Um, and then also another negative about uh, an unsecured line of credit is it requires really good credit to get it done because there's no assets you know that are, are backing it. There's there's nothing securing the loan. It's really heavily um, dependent on your credit score. So you really need 690, 700, 720 plus in order to get a good amount of money for an unsecured loan. 
So yeah, there's lots of different ways. A lot of people think that you know it, it's hard to get a business fi business loan, but if you're working with a you know your local bank or a qualified lender, they try to make it pretty easy for you. Um, you can get pre-qualified today. A uh, very simple funding tool that I have on my website. Um, you just click on the link right there. I'll take you right to Guiding Financial and get pre-qualified and, and start fishing in the right pond and, and seeing uh, how much of a business we can afford. Uh, if you have any questions about this, of course, feel free to reach out, 978-891-7145, or shoot me an email, brandon at globalfranchisesolutions.com. This wraps up day six of the Franchise Buyers course. we got one more day coming to you tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I hope to talk to you soon.